Hello and welcome to App Developer Conversations. As always, I'm joined by Ian Sefferman of Mobile Dev HQ and I'm Roby Ganguly of Attentive. We're missing Ryan Morrell of Place Play as he gets a, a tan in yeah, his eye. Yeah, tan in my eye. <laughs> so this week we're doing a little bit different uh, format than usual. We're, we're tackling one real heavy topic about uh, marketing. So in the previous segment, we were talking about sort of leading up the launch and some, some decisions that people make when they launch an app and as they're really thinking about how they position themselves and get discovered. And then in this segment, we're gonna go deeper on post-launch, so engagement and retention and what you can do to make sure that your conversions are going higher. So, let's first start on that topic, conversions. Once your app is live and you're in the app store, there are some things that you do in addition to your description and your screenshots to ensure that the people who come across your app page are more disposed to actually downloading and purchasing. What would you say the top two things that people are, are caring about are? Well, you know, I think, um, I think sort of the, the top things that people care about the moment they hit your, hit your page are, I want, maybe the top three things, I want uh, sort of a one sentence summary of what this app actually does for me. I want to see the screenshots because you can pretty quickly discern this is a crappy app versus this is a legit app yep. from the screenshots. Um, and I want to know the rate of reviews. Yep. Right? And those are those are the three things. And so if you if you immediately see an app with with basically any one of those factors can can quickly kill a deal, right? Yep. Uh, so if if they don't know what's going on within a sentence, they're they're gone. If they if they see that your app is crappy because the screenshots are crappy, they're gone. And if they see you have a one star rating, they're gone, right? Yep. Um, now that being said, by having a, the the best one sentence summary, the best screenshots, and the five star app, you're still not guaranteed. Like it still has to match what they want, but that's certainly going to give you the the highest chance, right? Yeah. And so in the previous segment, we talked a little bit about like those screenshots, some of the things that are successful, the description of some of the things that are success successful. But what's interesting to note is that as your app goes live and is live, you have the opportunity to learn and refresh. So the language that you're using can actually be informed quite significantly by having your first couple thousand downloads and your first couple thousand customers talking to you, right? We power in-app communications. And one of the ways in which customers are using us on a regular basis is they have these conversations with customers, they figure out why people are using the app, what really resonates, and then they change their copy and they change what they highlight in the screenshots in order to be more aligned with what they're learning from the consumer base. I, I love that. And I think, uh, I don't, do you guys actually do this with like, can you guys actually bring together sort of the most commonly used phrases for an app? Not yet. It's, it's yeah. okay. definitely on the roadmap. Cool, so, yeah. Because yeah. so, I, I mean, I think that that is so powerful in, in terms of like bringing, bringing that together as a, uh, as a publisher, really understanding the exact messaging that your, that your customers are using about you and then reflecting that back in what you say about your own app. Yeah. So powerful. It's, it, this is very traditional marketing. You know, a lot of people coming into the app development space are trying to reinvent the wheel, but truly great marketing resonates with consumers because of a deep understanding of consumer needs and desires and language. And so the more that you can get close to that consumer and learn from them, the faster you can iterate and get the language exactly right. So that's really powerful. Pay attention to what people are saying about you in the app store and other places, but in particular to you directly. Make sure that you can hear from them. And then we also really, the ratings and review stuff just cannot be underestimated in its importance. There are a lot of psychological studies about how important ratings and reviews are to us as consumers for digital goods, because a digital good is by definition ephemeral. You can't actually hold it, you can't look at it, you can't feel it. And so as a result, we really rely upon one another and our experiences with these digital goods to make purchasing, purchasing decisions. So, so what do you think are then the knobs and levers that uh, an app publisher can turn to, uh, to sort of make the ratings and reviews reflect what they want to reflect and, and sort of see that messaging that, that, and language that they want the, the consumer to see? So, you know, obviously I'm biased. I think our tools do a great job of this, but you know, the general principle of what we see being really successful is when you have an app that's got some user base at all, they're, they're using it for a purpose, right? And they're happy. So those people who are using your app on a regular basis, reach out to them and take the time to ask them how they're feeling about it. And the people who are ecstatic, the people who love your app, 
you can actually ask them to go talk about you in public. You know, most people are so busy being happy using your app, they're not going to think, oh, I should go to the app store and rate this app. They're, it's sort of an unnatural app. That's why we see a lot of ratings and reviews being biased towards the negative, because that's the person who has this incentive to go say something. So it's really about talking to your customer base, the people who are using you on a regular basis, reaching out to them, and, and finding out if they're ecstatic, and, and then making it really easy for them to go talk about you. So that's kind of step one. Um, step two is ensuring that as you launch updates, that you have a regular set of communications with those people because the people who maybe rated your first version are not necessarily going to then think to themselves, I should go do this with my next version. So we see something called the ratings cliff when people update. We actually see a lot of developers who are wary of updating because they have a really great set of ratings or reviews that just right now, and they're like, oh, you know, I don't want to do this because I've got a thousand great ratings and reviews, and they're all going to go to zero, right? Like, that number sort of resets, especially in the, the iTunes the app store. So, making sure that you're reaching out to those people and you're thoughtful about that before you push updates is really, really big key. What, what about you? you? You hear from a lot of developers about this. Yeah, you know, I, I, think, I think you're right on. Uh, like, in my mind, uh, a huge part of it is that, that point of knowing when to actually ask for, for feedback, right? Like, at what point are your users clearly having success in their app mm -hmm. that they would, that they are, that they are in a happy state and are going to say that, yes, I, I love the app, and I'm asking at that point. And I think that's something that you guys work on too, which is like, is it on number of opens? Is it after a amount of time? Like, whatever it is, right? And I think, I think that you can get really smart about that too. If you're a game, you can do it at like, after a level has been unlocked, whatever it might be, right? Uh, so I think that's huge, uh, but I think otherwise you're generally like totally in agreement with what I do. Yeah, and you know, that's a really good point. Dis discovering what the moments of happiness are inside of your app is something too few developers spend time on, but every time we see a developer do that, we actually, we, we suggest you can, you can do it based upon opens, days on the device, or something that's significant to your app as a variable that you can pass along to us. That latter one is the most powerful. So like you said in the game, completing a level, that's a moment of happiness, it's a moment of, of, of success. If you're um, you know, a, a signature, like a, a doc signing app, right, after somebody's signed their first doc or second doc, right, that's a moment where they've accomplished something with your app that's provided utility. That's a great place to, to interject and, and ask how they're feeling. So discovering those moments of happiness, and you should know those, right? If you're designing your app, you're actually trying to design these, these accomplishments so th that should be pretty easy for you to come up with and, and create some pieces around and then to test. And you know, the final thing about this is, I think, instrumenting. So understanding what's going on. We see a bunch of people using kind of homegrown, uh, hard-coded solutions, and then they have no insight into how many people have seen like a ratings prompt or something like that. So they don't actually know if it's working. They're just like, well, I see other people doing it. And again, take that extra step. Figure out how to instrument it. And that's, that's one of the things our customers just love, the that's, data about all that. That's great. So, you know, let's move on from the ratings and reviews and go into the real problem that not enough people are talking about in mobile app, um, uh, mobile app development today, which is retention. Yeah. So, talk to me a little bit about what you see. Um, geez, well, I think you probably have the, the, the more, more robust data set around retention, but, uh, but you know, at, at a high level, we see that, or, or at least anecdotally, we see that the apps that make the home screen are used constantly. Yep. Um, the apps that don't make the home screen, either either people hate it so much that they are going to uninstall it, or it's just it's apathy, complete apathy, and they'll sit in a folder somewhere and never actually be open. Uh, and and the you know the best ways to uh, the best ways to improve your retention at 30,000 foot level is A, you know, amazing experience, and B, integration with an existing workflow, right? Both of those things sort of have to happen, and, and even if you're a game, I think that's true, right? Um, but, you know, I can think of, I can think of a calendar app, if the calendar during app doesn't, doesn't uh, integrate with my Google Calendar, like it's not, it's not happening, yep. right? Um, so, like, it has, to, it has to have that workflow, and it has to have sort of the Go along with it, but uh, like you probably have really great data on, on sort of 
Do you, uh, do you guys have data on sort of like what is average retention? Like what is a good benchmark? Because the answer is horrible. Um, but on average, ninety percent of consumers are gone within six months of downloading an app. Ninety percent, and that's that's the average. So apps like Facebook actually pull that up because of the amount of data and time spent. Um, so the vast majority of people are just trying new app. Whether your app costs five dollars or is free, they're trying you out, and then they have so many apps on their device. I think that the last number we saw as an average was over eighty different apps installed on the average smartphone. Right, so they, they don't have time. They don't, don't don't think about it. They're distracted. So what you're really looking for is that core passionate base, like figuring out as quickly as possible the people who aren't in the ninety percent, that ten percent that are coming back. Figuring out what they're using. We see way too many developers who are always focused on getting more and more and more without thinking about who, right? Yeah. Which audience and why they're using it. Super critical. When you focus on that 10%, when you figure out why they're using you and do research with those people and then you build more deeply for those people, we see that curve changing. We, we see people generating much more emotion from the consumer. People, people are like, oh, I love this app because it solves this problem that I had and it brings in more of that audience. Word of mouth is totally underestimated, and I'm not talking like Facebook share word of mouth, I'm talking about you and I are at dinner, and I tell you about the Sign Now app, which is awesome for document signing on my iPhone, and you're like, I'm gonna go get that, because it totally suits my need, I have that exact same problem. Which, by the way, I'm probably gonna go get after we have this conversation. It's just phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal for document signing. So, um, that's, that's the thing that we see a lot, is. When you want to solve for retention, what you really have to start at is the core principle of who's using you, who's really finding you meet their needs, learning more about them, going deeper with them, and then that leads to building a better product for people who are going to use you on a regular basis. Sure. So, cool stuff. Yeah. Um, I think you know, we've covered a bunch of things here, gone yeah. probably a little, little bit long, but feel free to reach out with other questions to Ian or myself, yep. and like this on Facebook, uh, like this on YouTube, really, and, and uh, share this with your friends, and tell us in the comments if you have other questions. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks.